Hi, thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Nara Youssef, and today we're at the Cleveland Clinic Culinary Medicine Teaching Kitchen at the Wellness Institute. Today we have Chef Jim Perko and his sous chef Gabby Shipta, and they'll be preparing a healthy seasonal butternut squash soup and a delicious vinaigrette salad dressing made with no added oil, sugar, or sodium, which are the three main addictives in food. So feel free to type in any questions that you may have in the comment section, and I'll read them off here as we go. And thank you so much for inviting us Absolutely. to your kitchen, guys. Thank you so much. Um, well, Chef, I want to start kind of by introducing um, our audience to you and sure. kind of explain to them what is a role of a chef in a Cleveland Clinic Health System. So that's a great question. And so what we do is I'm trying to create and develop culinary medicine for the Cleveland Clinic enterprise. And so what is culinary medicine? Basically, we teach patients how to eat food that's going to be healthy for them, and the bottom line is so they could love them back, right? So example, you, it's a choice. People could choose to eat foods that promote inflammation, which is a precursor for all chronic disease, or you could choose to eat foods that fight inflammation. Mm -hmm. So as you stated, the three main addictives in food are sugar, sodium, and fat. Mm -hmm. That's not going to love you back. No. The bottom line is you want to learn how to love and enjoy foods. You really want to be able to love foods that's going to love your body back. So we're going to show you two recipes today. We're going to make a salad dressing, a vinaigrette that has zero added oil, zero added sugars, and no sodium. Great. You know, Excellent. and if you can make one vinaigrette, you can make 101 vinaigrettes, and we're going to give you the techniques how to do that. The next thing we're going to do is show you how to make a healthy seasonal butternut squash soup that will also love you back. Great. All right. Well, what are we going to start with today? Okay. So today we're going to start with a soup, but I, what I want to do is that I thought I'd share a couple techniques, okay? Because when we develop our uh, curriculum for our shared medical appointments, we do them for breast cancer, prostate cancer, MS, and we do culinary medicine for chronic disease. But the curriculum we're trying to do is a technique-driven curriculum because no matter what the science says, the techniques are always, they'll follow any science. So how you hold a knife in your hand applies to any diet that you'll do. So here's some of the techniques that I want to show. And it has to start with the soup that we're going to make. So the first thing we've got to do is we're going to uh, saute onions until translucent in a pot for the soup. Now, you could do that with oil. You can also do it without oil, okay? Um, but to dice the onion, I thought I'd give a technique real fast how to dice the onion. And what we teach our patients, uh, we try to teach them culinary literacy. And part of it is how you hold a knife. So it's an 8-inch chef knife. We should try to tell people not to hold it like this, but thumb and index finger up on the blade and three fingers on the handle. That's the easy part. How you hold the food in your other hand is the hard part. We try to show people to indent their fingernail under their first knuckle so they're cutting like this because if you hold food like that, that's how you cut your finger. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to peel an onion, and this is how I show patients. Now, I want to you know, make the point that I'm doing it on a paper towel, not on the cutting board, and here's the reason why. Because this onion was in a bin with a lot of other onions at the store. And if you would take this onion and put it right on the cutting board, that means you just cross-contaminated your cutting board with everything that was on the outside of that onion. And now, it's not such a bad idea if the onion is going to be cooked, like we're cooking it in a soup today. But if you take this onion and you're going to eat it raw, it's a much bigger deal. Not to mention you cross-contaminated your cutting board, right? Okay, so we got the onions peeled. Now we put the peeled onion on our cutting board like so. And then we take this and we just, you know, throw it into the garbage, right? So if you cut the onion in half, the way they'll teach in culinary school is that, and this is hard for a lot of people to do, but you'll make slits in it like this and then you'll go crossways and one or two in here. But the way anybody could do this at home, get perfectly diced onion every time, is all you got to do is you'll make a slice of onion, okay? Then you'll see when you slice it, the slices are half moons. All you got to do is pivot the slices and you will get perfectly diced onion every single time. I'll do that one more time so you can see it. And you could get it from end to end. So the onion slices are half moon. You always want to cut more with the back part of the knife rather than the tip because if you go like this, all these muscles are tight and tense. But when you cut with the back part, all, it's all relaxed. 
So now you cut, you cut on the downswing, you pivot the onion, and you'll have perfectly diced onion every single time. The other point I want to make when doing the soup is you can see as these onions, they're raw right now. So there's two main things in an onion, sulfur and sugar. Sulfur is what makes you cry when you go to peel an onion, right? Well, if I took this onion raw and I go to put it in the pot, then I go to add our vegetable broth in the pot afterwards with the onion, what'll happen is this sulfur will get infused into the liquid. And then you have this funky taste in onion water, right? So instead what we wanna do, we wanna take our onions and we wanna saute them to the point of where they're translucent. What will happen when you start to do that, then that sulfur dissipates. It just goes out, poof. It's just like if you eat garlic raw, it'll come out your pores the next day. If you roast it in the oven like roasted garlic, you could spread it on a toast point, right? You diminish the potency of it, the same thing will happen with the onion. If I would continue to cook that onion further, then I start to caramelize the sugars and that plant becomes sweet, as in grilled onions, okay? So that's part of what we try to teach in our shared medical appointments. The other part that I wanna give is you can make your life easy or you can make it hard just by the selection you make at the grocery store. Here's an example, okay? If you're gonna buy the butternut squash soup, you wanna buy a squash that's got a small bottom and a big top. Because if you have a big bottom and a small top, the bottom has hollow. It's got the seeds, it's the cavity, right? The solid part's the top. So you're gonna, if this recipe, if a full recipe calls for 46 ounces of squash, right? You're gonna have a lot of work and it won't be a happy time in the kitchen taking all the little bit of meat and the seeds and peeling the bottom part if it's big. If you got a small bottom and a big top, from here to here is solid. So you'll have a much easier time to peel and cut the squash. And then we also show our patients how you could cut a hard squash like this, where it, even if they're really short in stature, how easily they could do it, just through techniques. That's why we do a technique-driven curriculum. So now we have our onions. They're at the point they're starting to come translucent. So now we're just gonna add our ginger. We're gonna add our carrots. And then we're gonna add our butternut squash. That's dice. And then we have our vegetable stock, okay, our broth. Now we're gonna add our vegetable broth, okay. And that's it, five ingredients, the soup is done. Now we're gonna crank up the heat, okay. And we're gonna bring it to a boil. And then when it comes down to boil, we'll turn it down to simmer and let it simmer. So Jim, All I'm right. gonna ask you, did yes. you add any spices, salt, pepper, anything? So the only thing that I added to that was first we did a little bit of olive oil, okay. extra virgin olive oil, which again, you could do without oil if sure. you want. The way to cook onions without oil is you need a taller pot and you go low and slow. A tall covered pot, real low and slow, humidity will build inside the chamber in that cook pot. The onion, that plant will become soft and then you'll start to get onions translucent if you want to caramelize them. It'll take probably about 45 minutes, it takes longer because you're going real low and slow. Every time you lift the lid, you vent out humidity, you stir the onions, just caramelize the sugars in that plant. Uh, we added vegetable broth to it, okay, which has, it's a seasoned broth because sure. it's a vegetable broth. And then um, I added fresh ginger and carrots and that's it yeah Perfect. and so what's going to give this a lot of flavor as that cooks it's going to reduce down we don't need to thicken it with a roux we don't need to thicken it with cream there's no dairy it's a vegan soup what will make it thick is the ratio of solid squash and carrots and ginger to the ratio of liquid that we put into it plus it, it thickens as it reduces down then we're going to puree it when an immersion blender, and it was, uh, with the way this works, it uh, creates a vacuum in these indentations, and within 30 to 40 seconds, you'll have a beautiful pureed soup. Awesome. So, the next recipe that I'm gonna do while the soup is cooking is how to make a vinaigrette salad dressing with no added oil and no added sugar, okay? So here's how we do that. Now, you could easily morph this into many variations on your own if you like, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is I took figs and prunes. Now, you know, when figs are in season in the fall, you could use fresh figs, but 
most of the time of the year they're not in season, at least not in this country. So what we'll do is uh, I took dried uh, prunes and dried figs, put them in a pot, a small cover pot with three quarter cup of water. It'll reduce down to about a tablespoon and a half or so, the liquid. And then we put that in a food processor along with a half a cup of balsamic vinegar. Okay, we got a half a cup of fresh blueberries. So you don't need blueberry vinegar, you wanna use the real deal. So we're putting blueberries in there, fresh blueberries. And that'll add the sweetness to the, to the Oh, dressing. absolutely, I'll, I'm gonna get into that. Okay. Then we got pepper. I got some fresh garlic, okay. And I have a little bit of Dijon mustard. Now you can easily put in parsley, you could put in any herb of your choice, okay? It's all subjective. Fresh parsley will add a lot of vitamin C to it. So now, all we're gonna do is puree this. And that's our vinaigrette. Now when our patients go to taste this, they see how really sweet it is. And I didn't add any sugar to it. So part of what we do in culinary medicine, our techniques is if I could teach patients how to make something moist without adding fat, sweet without adding sugar, savory without adding sodium, how to add density without adding grades and bulk without meat, and if I could show you how to flavor raw food, those are techniques that you could do to any diet, okay? And that's what we teach our patients, all right? So now, we got our, we got our, and you always want to pre-toss your salad. So here's our vinaigrette. I just want to show the viewers how thick this is. Look at that. Wow. Look how thick it is. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. If you want to even make it thicker, you could just put in chia seed, right? If you want to make this finer, I could have put it in a blender, right? And uh, really puree it, it would get even finer. So rather than pouring dressing on your salad, it's always better to pre-toss. So we're gonna put a little bit of dressing in like so, and then you wanna pre-toss your greens. One of the reasons is you'll always use less dressing, number one, number two, you get to taste all the nuances in those greens, and then you got a beautiful, lightly dressed salad, and that's what you'd wanna have. You don't wanna have too much you know, salad dressing in there. So now, you saw how you can make a vinaigrette that has no oil added, no added sugars, no added sodium, and it actually tastes great. We're gonna let Nadia try it. All right. All right? Oh, and she'll get to see how sweet that was. Oh, it's very light. Now, here's the kicker to that. It was sweet, and Nadia liked it, but you know what? What made it sweet? You got the sugar from the prune, the sugar from the grapes that were in the balsamic. You got the sugar from the blueberries, right? You got the sugar from the figs. But eat a prune, what happens? You got the fiber attached to the sugar. So I just didn't add agave or honey. I actually added naturally occurring sugars that had the fiber attached, not to mention the phytonutrients in the blueberries yeah. and, all the, and the prunes and the I calcium mean. from the prunes. So what you're getting is you're getting a vinaigrette that's going to love you back. You always want to love and enjoy foods that's going to love your body back. That's an example of how to do that. That's amazing, and it's, it's very tangy. I mean, it's, it's sweet and it's tangy, and I can't believe those are all the ingredients you put in there. Yeah, that's and genius. anybody <laughs> can morph that into a version. You could add a different berry, strawberries, oranges, nectarines, peaches, idea. whatever you want. Yeah. It'll thicken it. Sure. It'll add density. It'll add viscosity, and that's what will happen. Great. Oh yeah, it's outstanding. Great, and then with the soup, or is, is everything done with the soup then? Are we? Uh... So what I do is I got the soup over here, all mm -hmm. right? The soup is just now starting to come to a boil. So it'll take probably about every bit, close to 20 minutes before this soup will be done. But I have one here that's already done. All right. Already made, obviously, right? And so I can show you what that'll look like, okay? while this one continues to cook, all right? I had a ladle there, Gabby, that was on the side. You didn't take it, did you? Okay. Awesome. Uh, okay. So now we'll take this soup. Okay. Thank you, Gabby. Okay. So here's what it looks like after it's pureed, okay? 
and we're just going to put it in so you can make this as thick or as thin as you want if you want to make it thinner just don't reduce it down as much or you could add more liquid than uh, solid matter and then what we did was we took the seeds that were in the butternut squash and we toasted them and so now we're going to garnish because you got a lot of nutrients in the seeds right okay and so now we're going to garnish it with the seeds and here when you're done you have a great tasting healthy nutritious soup that also will love you back and we get to let again Nadia taste and enjoy <laughs> Gabby can yeah. obviously work to help make it I'm mic'd up. she gets to enjoy so I want to ask you what makes it so thick right now when I look at this it looks so nice and so thick. what made it thick was we reduced it down okay okay, okay so like seven. and when you reduce it down mm -hmm. you intensify the flavor and you don't need to add sodium and fat to do it. So think about it. We stated that the three main addictives are added sugar, sodium, and fat. The more you have of all three, the more you want. That's why everybody likes ice cream. It's a trifecta. It has all three. You could just keep on eating it, right? Mm -hmm. So we're in the flavor business. That's what we do. And if I want to teach people how to love foods that's going to love them back, I want to ramp up the flavor. And if you're trying to reduce your added sugar, sodium, and fat and ramp up the flavor, that's a challenge. One of the techniques to do that is if I reduce it down like this, I'm ramping up the flavor. I'm intensifying the carrot and the ginger and the squash without having to add sodium and fat. Sure, sure. That's the technique. It's simple. Doesn't matter the science. Doesn't matter the doc. It's all about the it's technique. It's all technique. It works on any diet. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, this is great. Well. I mean, we're all done with our recipes right now, but um, is there anything that you want to leave our viewers with? So the only thing I would leave you is the holiday seasons are starting to approach us. Now's the time, most importantly, that you want to try to stick with healthy behaviors. Uh, we'll be back again in November, and we'll show you how to make a healthy dessert from pumpkin that will also love you back, right? And how to change traditions. You know. One of the hardest things to do is change your behaviors, especially in food. But if you make the right food choices, you'll be amazed how much you'll feel better. Great. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank Starting you so off much. with something like this. Sure. sure. Thank absolutely. you, Chef, and thank you, Gabby. Um, well, that's all the time that we have for today. And for more health tips and information from Cleveland Clinic, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Cleveland Clinic, just one word. And just like he said, we'll be back in November to make some holiday desserts that you don't only love, but also loves you back. And thank you again for watching, and we'll see you again next time.